Because Meghan Markle, we just heard, has won the latest stage of her court battle against the publishers of the Mail on Sunday. This is the Court of Appeal. It's upheld the ruling that the paper wrongfully published extracts of a private letter sent to her estranged father, Thomas Markle. One of the judges, Sir Geoffrey Ross, uh, Voss, said the Court of Appeal upheld the judge's decision that the Duchess had a reasonable expectation of privacy in the contents of the letter. Those contents were personal, private, and not matters of legitimate public interest. The articles in the Mail on Sunday interfered with the Duchess's reasonable expectation of privacy and were not a justified or proportionate means of correcting inaccuracies about the letter. Now, this is sensational because what had happened since the actual original case, we'd had the law established that we, we understood that Thomas Markle had no right to hand the letter to, to Megan, to, to the newspaper. He wasn't allowed to do that because the copyright was in the sender's hands, in other words, Megan's. Then it emerged that Meghan had cooperated with the people who wrote the book about her. But Angela, the paper still lost. Yeah, I find it quite remarkable, really. I mean, obviously, there's always a balance with, with any, anything in the media, particularly newspapers, the right to privacy versus what's, you know, in the public interest. And people might argue, well, this is tittle-tattle. Why is it even interesting? Um, but so many sort of unusual facts came to light beforehand. She'd forgotten. She famously said that she'd forgotten that she'd spoken to somebody about possibly... Um, helping with um, with not helping with the letter, but she'd given certain information to an aide, but she'd she had to be reminded of that in court. There seemed to be a lot of murky water here. This is, my, is it Mr. K Jake, Jason Knauf or Knaus, who was the aide who came forward yep. and said, "Wait a minute." Yep. She actually thought about the publication of this letter. She'd almost foreshadowed it. It doesn't matter though. She's won. That's it. Yeah. Um... Uh, I, whether or not you like or dis Meghan Markle or not, based on, based on things she said and done, I like that she got one over on the Daily Mail, given the treatment they've done of her. I mean, we know what happened in terms of praising Kate for eating avocados and then portraying, uh, trying to implicate Meghan in murder and drought for um, eating avocados. There's been the clear, just targeted harassment by the Daily Mail against her. So I'm glad that she's got one over on them. Mm, well, yeah, I, I wonder whether this case is nothing to do with some legal issue about who had the copyright in the letter and etc. It's just about the court saying to the papers, leave her alone. That's the, I think that's what it is. We have, look, we have a free press and they have the right to call to account the behaviour of public figures. For so eating when you, avocados. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second, hang on a second. So when you have uh, Prince Harry and, and, and Meghan Markle saying, um, you know, lecturing us on climate change and then she jets to New York for a £350,000 baby shower. It's fine if she wants to do that, but don't throw the green argument down our throat. Um, you also had some of their keynote columnists like Amanda Platel, who said they really praised Meghan Markle at the beginning. She was a breath of fresh air. She was going to break the fuddy-duddy-ness of the palace. And, and they want, everybody wanted it to work. They really mm, did. Because it, it's really good to... It's, it, it, <laughs> Essentially, building her up means she falls harder. It's it, it's oh, I don't know if it was like that. I think surely it was that they they really got excited by the whole Meghan thing, but then that started to overshadow William and Kate. And the BBC program recently s suggests that the William Kate camp then did try to do some gentle briefing just to take the heat out of all the excitement away from Meghan. It all got out of hand and it ended up with a sort of PR disaster and they left the country. But, but in the end, it does come back to this thing that the courts, maybe you agree with this, Femi, the courts have said, leave her alone. That's it. I think, I think it'd be wrong to suggest that the courts took a, a more political stance on this, but I think given that given that there is the argument that somebody has a reasonable expectation that, that if you send a letter to your dad about personal issues then it should be private i think that principle was simple I, i'm amazed that, that and this is the, obviously the copyright issue is really interesting isn't it that mm -hmm. if you send someone a letter the copyright remains with you as the writer it, it of the it remains with you yes so, so the person you send the letter to i would have thought they own it and they could do what they want with it but they can't and apparently the same thing is with pictures so even if a picture is of you the copyright still remains with the photographer whoever took the picture okay but you can argue your right to privacy with that, depending on where it's published. But yes. you've also got to remember with the Meghan thing, we've got to frame it in the, the, the alacrity with which she's spoken to the likes of Oprah Winfrey about the very detailed aspects of what went on behind palace doors. So this issue of right to privacy, although I appreciate there's copyright law, is immediately knuckled by somebody who has opened her heart to billions of people around the world about what went on, much of which was disputed.